Hi, and welcome back to Hudson Appliance for another episode of Wicked Good Food. I'm your host, Matt Williams, and today we actually have some stuff that's relatively healthy. Now, that wasn't my plan. If you've seen a lot of my other shows, I'm not necessarily the, uh, the most health conscious person as far as what we're eating. I'm going for real intense flavor, but these Asian inspired dishes we are going to have today really pack a lot of flavor punch, if you will. One of the things we're going to make is we have some nice fresh haddock here. We're going to steam it in this bamboo steamer. We're going to use a bunch of these vegetables here and make a little vegetable slaw. We're going to have some brown rice and make a really nice meal with that. We're also going to make some spring rolls. There's some shrimp here and I'm going to show you how to clean these up a little bit. We'll steam those as well and a bunch of ingredients into our um, spring rolls and some dipping sauce. And the last thing we're going to make that isn't necessarily Asian inspired but it uses a lot of ginger and that's going to be some fresh homemade ginger ale. So let me get started. Over here I have a pot of water on the stove. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. It's almost at a boil. It's about two and a half cups of water. I'm going to add a cup of brown rice to that. And go ahead and give that just a quick stir to make sure it's all wet. Stick my lid on that. I'm going to let it come back to a boil. And then I'm going to reduce it really low. And this is going to take about 35, 40 minutes or so to cook. The next step I'm going to work on is ginger. So this is a big hunk of ginger root. Ginger root's available in just about any supermarket. And what I'm going to do is I need to peel it, get this outer peel off. The easiest way to do this, I think, is to break it into a manageable piece. Then use a spoon, just any sort of metal spoon, and just go like this. You can use a vegetable peeler if you want, but I actually think the spoon is a lot easier. So I'm just going to peel this down. If there's a little nub, like this little nub, I just scraped it off. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to use this in two of our dishes. This is going to go into the water where we steam our fish and steam our shrimp. It's also going to go into our ginger ale, obviously. So I'm going to move this peel out of the way. And I want to get about an ounce and a half or so. So I'm going to use a hunk about that big. Then I'm just going to take my knife, put my knife on my cutting board flat but I have the heel of the knife sticking off the cutting board and I'm just going to give it a smash like that and a couple quick chops. I'll do the same thing with this side. I'm going to cut that off so it doesn't go all over the place. Now this, about an ounce and a half, is going to go over here. This is about a half a cup of water. And what we're going to do is we're essentially going to make a ginger tea. We're going to add some sugar to it as well. Let me turn that on. Add about six ounces of sugar. That's exactly six ounces. Three quarters of a cup or so. Now the cool thing about making your own soda, making your own ginger ale in particular, is that you can make it taste exactly how you want. If you want it to be sweeter, use more sugar. If you don't want it as sweet, you know what to do. If you want it to have a little more ginger flavor or you want to use a sugar, a sugar substitute, some different things you can play with. Now I'm going to take the rest of this ginger Break it up a little more. Give it a quick little cut here. And this is going to go right into this water here. So this water is just starting to warm up. I'm going to turn it up a little bit more. And this is going to be our steaming water. I also am going to add some garlic to it. So at the supermarket, you can buy whole peeled garlic, which is great. You have no hassle of dealing with all the peels. I'm going to do the same thing with this and just give it a smash. So all we're looking for, both of these gingers and this garlic, is just to suck some flavor out and get it into the water. All right. So I'm going to throw my garlic in there. Now our rice has come to a boil. I want to turn this down to a nice low simmer and keep it covered. The reason why you always keep rice covered and the reason why it tells you exactly how much water to use and how much rice to use is because when it's done it should have just the perfect proportion of water to rice. There shouldn't be any left in the pan. It should all be absorbed by the rice. If you remove the pan, excuse me, if you remove the lid, then some of that water is going to evaporate. All right. So now, good, our ginger ale is starting to simmer a little bit. I'm going to let that go a little longer and show you how this thing works. So this is an Asian steamer made out of all bamboo. It has three different compartments. The bottom two are identical, and there's a little lip on the inside, but they nest into each other like so. So 
let's do this. I'm going to take and stick one of these in here like so. Now there's about uh, half an inch or so of water in there. Stick that one on top and then this one sits right on top of that like so. And it's great. So the steam is generated in the bottom and it rises all the way up through all the layers. You could use just one layer, you could use two, you could use three. And this is woven very tightly so that all the steam is trapped right inside there. All right, let's move this out of the way. Now the next thing we're going to do is prepare these shrimp. I have some shrimp that I started. These shrimp still have a, their tail on them. It's really easy to remove the tail. Just kind of split right at the back and pull gently and you should be able to get all the meat off of it. You can go ahead and just tear them if you want, but you're going to end up leaving a little bit of tail meat inside the tail. So these are going to go in our spring roll. A lot of dishes you'd leave the tail on, but in our spring roll, spring roll we want everything to be edible. Now the other thing we want to do is we want to make sure that our shrimp have been deveined. And these ones have, but I'll show you a really easy way to do it, is you just pinch in your thumb and forefinger and take a paring knife and cut right along the back. And inside there, you can pull out that little vein, the poop chute. Sometimes it's filled, sometimes it's not. Either way, you don't want to eat it. So we'll go like that. Now, for our spring rolls, I'm going to end up cutting these shrimp in half all the way so that there's just a, they're really thin, actually. So I'll do a couple of these. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to open up the steamer. I'm going to go ahead and lay my shrimp right in here. So now we have our water that has our ginger and our garlic in it. We're going to take a break. I'm going to finish getting the rest of these shrimp ready, wash my hands, and we'll move on with the rest of our dishes. All right, welcome back. So I cleaned up my hands. I cleaned up the area we were working. I've got our shrimp in our steamer. Let me pull this off. This has only been about four or five minutes and these shrimp are done, completely done already. They've curled up. You can really smell the ginger and smell the garlic. So I'm going to take these and just pop these onto a plate and stick them right in the refrigerator because I want them to cool off when we put them in our spring roll. We'll do that in a moment. Now the next thing we're going to do is season our fish. We're just going to season it very lightly just with some soy sauce. Just sprinkle some soy sauce right over the top. Just like so. And then I'm going to put these right in our steamer. So you can see there's a little bit of steam escaping, but when I pull this off, it really does a great job of holding on to the steam. So I don't mind if some of the soy sauce goes in this water. It's not going to be used for anything else. Careful you don't burn yourself because it is steam. And I'm just going to drop that in just like that. This is going to take, depending on the size of the fish, these fillets were folded over a little bit, 12 to 15 minutes to cook, to fully cook. Get this out of the way for now. <clears throat> now the next thing we need to do is prepare our vegetables. One of the things we're going to use for some nice bright color are some peppers. I actually found these at the supermarket. They were a great deal. They were like $3 a pound and you get red, yellow, and orange. So I'm just going to cut the tops off of these and cut them in half like so. Now obviously this is a, a quick stir fried vegetable dish that you can use whatever you want. My mom hates peppers. So I would say mom, don't put peppers in there. Or she would say, Matthew, don't put peppers in there. But um, use whatever vegetables you like. They don't necessarily have to be Asian vegetables. But I'm just going to go through and pull the seeds out and the little membrane that's in there of these. And we're going to give them a quick julienne. Now you could actually take all these vegetables and throw them right on top of your fish right now. If you wanted to do this with almost absolutely no fat at all, you could go ahead and do that and they would steam and they wouldn't take quite as long as the fish, but let it steam for a couple minutes and then throw it in there. But we're going to saute this together. All right. And so all these things are going to get cooked very quickly, so I'm not worried 
that they all need to be separate. So I'm gonna put all our peppers in there together. I have some pea pods. You can throw these in a hole if you want, but for this, we're gonna julienne these as well. I'm gonna kind of line them all up so they're going more or less the same direction. I'm gonna go just a little bit on a bias or at an angle. This is gonna give a great splash of color and a nice crunchy texture. One thing I forgot to mention is that I shut off the heat underneath our uh, syrup for the ginger ale. Now we're gonna let that steep. It should steep really for about an hour or so to get as much uh, flavor out of it as we can. We'll use a carrot. Just peel this really quickly. And I brought a machine called a mandolin to go through and julienne these really easily, but you can cut them by hand if you want. Cut a manageable piece. I always like to cut a flat side so it doesn't roll around on me. Then cut this into little planks. Then each of these planks, you in turn just cut into little strips. This is gonna be your um, hardiest vegetable. It's gonna take the longest to cook, so make sure that these are pretty small. If, you left, if I left a hunk of carrot in there this big, by the time my other vegetables are done, this is still gonna be totally raw. So we'll julienne these. Let's stick these right in there. But you can see, pretty good. Pretty good quick little julienne. We'll get that later. We'll get some uh, scallions. And we're gonna cut these on a bias as well, which just means at an angle. I wanna leave them really long. Some of these we're gonna cook, and some of these are going to just get sprinkled on top as a garnish. Great. Those can go right in there. And the last thing that we're gonna use as a vegetable are some water chestnuts. This is a can of water chestnuts. You can get these at any supermarket. I'm a huge fan of water chestnuts. Not necessarily a huge fan of this can opener. There we go. But water chestnuts have a semi-unique texture. They don't have a whole heck of a lot of flavor, but their texture is what we're really after. It's most similar to probably an apple, even though it's not quite the same as an apple. It's similar to jicama, if you're familiar with jicama. But here's our water chestnut. So it's whole, so I'm just gonna take these and slice them. Let me move this out of the way. Slice them down a little bit. All right, so we were boiling over a little bit there. I'm gonna turn the heat down. Because some of the proteins from the fish dropped in there, it gave it something to bubble up. So we'll just turn our heat down a little bit on this. We don't want it to cook too hard, too fast. Beautiful. So I'm gonna take a couple minutes, slice some more of these water chestnuts up, and get ready to prepare our spring rolls. All right, I'm back, and I brought my mandolin with me. So this is a French mandolin. It has a whole bunch of different adjustable blades, which I won't get into right now. But what we're going to do is we want to julienne these. A julienne is a matchstick cut. It's about the size of a wooden matchstick. It's an eighth of an inch by an eighth of an inch by two and a half to three inches. There's a little lever underneath here that I can use to adjust my blade to adjust the thickness. Then here, there's another adjustment I can make that'll make these either an eighth of an inch or about um, a quarter of an inch. So I set this on an eighth of an inch, like so, I'm gonna grab my carrot. So there's a very sharp blade that goes across and these little blades that come up like fingers. And I'm gonna just slide this across. Like I said, there's a bunch of sharp blades, so watch your fingers. It comes with a guard that you should use, um, in particular once you get down to a smaller nub. But I just wanted to show you real quick, but look at this, isn't that great? So quick, so easy, and this, lots and lots of applications. Just gonna move this out of the way for now. And that. One of the things I forgot to do earlier is I have some rice noodles here. These rice noodles, they cook really quickly. But I have some boiling water. I'm just gonna drop them into this pot of boiling water. Go ahead and shut that off. 
and just let them sit and they'll soften. And check them after five minutes or so and see if they've softened enough. If not, let them go a little bit longer. You want them to still maintain a little bit of texture but not be totally limp or be falling apart. So I've got a cucumber and a zucchini. The cucumber is going to go in our spring rolls, so we'll do that in a minute, but this zucchini I want to use in our julienne vegetables. Actually, you know what, while we're at it, why don't we use a mandolin? You're saying, good idea at home. So same thing, just go right across. We got real thin pieces. I'm going to make these a little bit thicker, actually. Still pretty narrow. And I'm going to try to use only the first couple, do only a couple passes so I'm not getting into the real seedy part. Not like it's a seedy part of town, but you just want to use the ones that have good texture. The seeds are not the best. But there we go. There's our zucchini. And that was not the zucchini that fell on the floor earlier. Wink, wink. All right, so I'm going to move these over. You know what? Some of these are probably a little long, a little, might be a little hard to eat. Give it a quick cut. Slide these over. All right. While we were gone, I also took, and just to show you, I poured our ginger syrup, as it's our ginger tea, essentially, into a glass as it's steeping here. So you can see all the ginger floating in there, and then we have our sugar water. And we're just going to let that hang out. Now for our cucumber, I'm going to cut off the ends, and this is going to go into our spring roll. So actually, you know what? I'll peel it. You don't have to peel it. If you like to peel, keep it on there. If you're not going to peel it, either way you should really wash it, but in particular if you're not going to peel it, usually they spray a food grade wax on them to help keep them fresh. So we'll peel this real quick. This all can go into the compost pile. Then I'm going to take this and cut it right in half, the long way. And use a spoon and clear out the seeds. So now we have a peeled, seeded cucumber. Then I'm going to take and just julienne. And this is going to be one of the vegetables that's going to go in our spring roll. One of the other vegetables that's going to go in our spring roll is carrots. And I have plenty of carrots here, so I'll use some of those carrots. We've got that. We're actually going to put some nice fresh basil leaves right into our spring roll. And the rice papers we're going to use are so thin, and I'll show you how we prepare those in a couple minutes, that we're going to be able to see the basil leaves through the, through the wrapper. And it just gives it a great look. And I wish you could smell this. The basil has such a great, fresh flavor. So what we're going to use next is some romaine. You could use some cabbage if you wanted, but we're going to chiffonade some romaine. If you remember your vocabulary, vocabulary lesson from one of the other episodes, you remember that chiffonade essentially, it's a julienne of a leafy green. So for this, I'm going to pull out the rib of this romaine, because I don't want that texture in there for what I'm doing. You can take it and roll it up if you want, like so and just go through and slice it really thin. Or you can just slice it. But do it really thin. All right, good. And that's what we get. All right, so we have almost all of our mise en place ready here. These are our spring roll wrappers. It's essentially a rice paper. We have these rice noodles that we're going to use. We're going to wrap them in this rice paper. It's super, super thin. All we're going to do is rehydrate this in a little bit of water so that it gets totally, almost completely translucent. Um, or it'll be very translucent, almost completely transparent. And we're going to roll this up. So let me take a peek at these. Now you can see they were very firm when I put them in. And the best way to taste one, whoops is to actually taste one. Almost. Those need to sit for another two minutes or so. I'm going to clean up my mess, get ready to soak these. We'll come back and make our spring rolls. Mm -hmm. 
All right, welcome back. So, our fish is all done. It's steamed nicely. I shut it off. It's going to stay warm right in this pan until we're ready to use it. I just smashed up some ginger. I'm going to make a really quick dipping sauce for our spring rolls. What I have is some ginger. I'm going to pour in some soy sauce. A little bit of rice vinegar. And just for a little bit of sweetness, we're going to add some molasses. Oh, like so. I'll give that a good stir later, but right now we're just, I want to get some of that ginger flavor into it. So I have a damp rag right here. In this pot, I have one of our rice papers. And you can see after it soaks, it's very, very pliable, very fragile. So I'm going to spread it out on our damp rag here, which just makes your life a little bit easier. And this is what they look like. Very thin. Just like that. So I'm going to drop this one in here. And by the time I'm done building this first one, this will be ready to use. The preparation is really pretty simple. And you can add whatever you want to this. I'm going to take a little bit of this rice pasta, these rice noodles, and put those in here. Vermicelli is often used, which is a real fine pasta, which I think works well in this. So I'm going to put in a couple shrimp, like so. We'll sprinkle in some of our cabbage. Not too much. A little bit of carrot, our cucumber. And you'll notice I'm doing this about a third of the way from the bottom of the wrapper. So I'm going to take this, fold it over on itself, and give it one little fold. Now two things are going to happen. I'm going to take my basil leaves, and I'm going to lay those right on there, like so. And I'm going to fold the ends in one end, then the other, and then continue to roll. And you'll see when it's all done, you get this beautiful see-through spring roll, which is great. So I'll do another one. So just that short amount of time, it goes from very brittle to ready to go. This isn't the kind of wrapper you would fry. Generally, um, you could definitely take these and fry them, but I love to take these and just, just as so. They're fantastic. If I'm going to fry, I like to use a real thin egg roll wrapper or something along those lines. So a couple of shrimp in here. Then after you've done a couple, you get, you get to where you can do them pretty quickly. And so what? Maybe sometimes you forget to add the carrots in one of them. Oh, well, that person doesn't get any carrots. So once again, to the rolling, which is the... It's not that difficult, but that's the key part. Roll it over once on itself. Get a couple leaves of your fresh basil, because that's going to be the side that we want to show off. And kind of look for the sexy looking leaves. If the leaves all beat up, don't use the beat up leaf. Put our ends over and continue to roll it up. All right, we're just about done. I'm going to take our ginger syrup here, strain it out. I'm going to pour this into a pitcher, and I'll show you what I'm going to do, but we're going to add a little bit of fresh lemon to give a little bit of acidity. Our fish is all set. Our rice is done over here. Looks perfect. That's off. We'll get Arthur up here, and he'll see, see what he thinks of what we made today. Hey, Arthur. How are you? Welcome back, Matt. Thanks again for having me at Hudson Appliance. I'm just finishing up here. I've got a couple more minutes of cooking here. Okay. I've got a hot pan. I'm going to warm up here. We have to saute our vegetables. One of the things we made, we're going to make a quick sauteed vegetables, but we steamed some fish. It had some ginger and some garlic. I've got some brown rice here. I'm going to remove the fish gently with this fish spatula and put it right on top. Right. Now our oil's popping. That's telling me it's ready. We'll go ahead and get our veggies in there. These are going to cook real quick. But while those sit there and finish cooking, I also made these spring rolls. It's got a rice paper wrapper that's not fried, so it's just, it's just going to have a nice little texture to it, but no extra fat. There's some shrimp and some fresh basil that are going to give it a real nice pop. One of the other things I made, some fresh ginger ale, or I'm about to make. 
Right here, this is just some soda water. I've got some ginger that's steeped in a sugar water, essentially. So I'm going to pour some of this right in here. That should be about good. Now we can always adjust it and make it a little more, a little less gingery. Give it a quick little stir. And I like to add, I'll give this a quick little flip. You want to come over and do a little saute action? Yeah. <laughs> just a little bit of fresh lemon juice, just for that little pop of acid. All right. That's so like smells. I said, these are really quick. Smells really good. Uh, it's nothing but fresh vegetables on there. So this is done already. Because we want to keep them nice and crisp. And you know what? I'm going to use the same spoon. A little bit of ginger is going to be great on there. We'll just pile this right on top. So there's a blast of color, a blast of height. There's some water chestnuts in here. They're going to give it a great texture. Move this out of the way. <clears throat> so let me pour you a little glass here. We'll see what we think. You can pour this over rice. This can be made ahead of time, make your syrup, and just make it up to order, essentially. But Very, very good. That tastes wonderful. And pretty interesting. You get that little bit of, of, of uh, fizz from that soda water more than you do with the yeah. canned stuff. We could add a little more sweetness to this. We could add a little more ginger, a little more syrup. But I think this is pretty good, just yeah, as it I is. I don't think it needs anything more on it. I'll put this over here and have that later. You want to give this fish a whirl? Sure. So it's, it's very, very simple, very, very healthy, but it should be really nice textures and flavors in here. Mm. Like that? Vegetables are nice and crispy, and, and it just tastes wonderful, wonderful. I'd try that's a little great. of that rice that's underneath there. Yeah, and this dipping sauce that we made for the spring rolls would actually be great just to drizzle a little on there. Okay. That'll bring a little salt to the party, a little acid to the party. Yep. And those are good things to have at a party. Can you try those? <laughs> Go right ahead. So if you want, dip it right in there. We allowed okay. to double dip? We are. Okay. Hmm. Oh, very good. Very, very good. Once again, you get all that crunch, that fresh, fresh basil mm. flavor. Now that's wicked, wicked good. good. 